All right, everybody, welcome in to another episode of the NFL Seekers podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about the big uglies on the defensive side of the ball, our defensive line rankings. We're each going to be ranking our top five edge rushers and interior defensive linemen. So it's going to be a jam-packed episode. It's going to be really fun. I'm in love with the, a few of the guys we're going to talk about today. I'm sure you are too. So really excited. How are you, Josh? Uh, doing good. You know, we're, we're just narrowing down to the last, you know, couple weeks till the draft starts. Um, so it's just, you know, it's full of go, full of excitement, a lot of, a lot of anxious nerves going on, but you know, ready to, ready to talk about the big uglies. Yeah. And I mean, like I said, we really should just get right into it because we have a lot of players to talk about. We both kind of have different number ones uh, for both edge and interior defensive line. We have really different lists. So we have a lot of players that we're going to spew, uh, rant, uh, yap about. I'm really excited. Do you want to get into it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's do it. Let's start it off with my edge one. We'll start it off with the edge rushers. And I am absolutely in love with this guy right here, Liatu Latu, uh, edge rusher out of UCLA. He's just a perfect uh, pass rush prospect to me. I'll be honest. I have him as a top 10 player in this class, number nine. I have him as a blue chip pass rusher and that there is a big red flag with lots of, I'll start it off with the, the kind of, you know, the, what if, or the, the question mark. And that is the injury red flag. He was forced to medically retire at Washington. That's kind of the whole situation's kind of weird. Cause apparently the doctors were wrong about it and, and nothing was wrong. And, you know, he came back and he hasn't really been injured since he hasn't had an injury scare since uh, leaving Washington. And he's been, just a force at UCLA. He, he really just has been like the best edge rusher in the country for the last two seasons. Over the last two seasons, he has a 95.4 PFF grade, best in the country, 27 sacks, best in the country, 126 pressures, second best in the country, 23% pass rush win rate, first in the country, 24.5 pass rush grade, first in the country. He's also the best finisher in college football, just the way he finishes blocks, uh, blockers, and and tackling he's just dominant in that aspect he's the best he's got the best cross chop in college football by far that you'll ever see because like Aaron Donald and the Watt and Bosa brothers only guys that have that perfected so he really is just a freak he has all the tools in his tool belt uh, of pass rush moves he can do everything he's read the encyclopedia of pass rushing and he's perfectly man I don't really have any knocks on him I think he's one of the better run defenders in this class too so like I, I think he's by far the best edge, uh, edge rusher, but how do you feel? I absolutely love Latu. Um, when you think of like a technician, that is Latu Latu. He has, like you said, every single pass rushing move in the book and does it at a cleaner level than anyone. I mean, it's like this guy has been trained by all pros entire life with how clean, you know, his, 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 you know, his set is. Um, and when you, when you're drafting a guy in the first round, it's kind of a guy that you have to say, you know, if I'm going to take an edge rusher in the first round, I have to project that this guy can be a double digit sack guy, you know, every single year. And there's absolutely no question with that with with law too. He's he's proved that and he has shown that. Um, and yeah, like you said, I am absolutely in love with him. I'm infatuated with the prospect that he is. And, you know, a lot of his game reminds me a little bit of Jalen Phillips, you know, weird similarity with UCLA and injury histories. But just I mean, the pass rushing you know, alone and, and the moves and the sets, you know, he's just, he's at an advanced level where, where these other guys aren't quite there yet. Um, but if we're transitioning into my number one, it's just a guy who I can see with his athleticism traits, with his bendiness, you know, not yet. Not yet. I want to talk about oh, a lot yeah. too more. I've got, I've got honestly a lot more to say about this guy, but <laughs> all, right, all right, take the floor, take the floor. Before we get, I, I honestly was just running out of breath because I was talking about this guy for so long, but I, I have a lot more to say. Like, I feel like he's just too fluid. He moves way too fluid. His hip fluidity is the best in the class as well. Like he's just one of the most natural movers you'll see relative to his, you know, big size. He's I'll show you his RAS score. He's, he's, kind of got the good res score grade uh size wise just because he's so big and he's got that that bigger weight but that you see the green on the right he's a very good athlete de despite not being like a you know a crazy dallas turner type athlete he's a very solid athlete he did good in the offseason process and 
I don't know. I think we're going to go a few years before we see a pass rusher as, as technically nuanced and as advanced as Latu. I really just think he has a high floor in the NFL. His bag is endless. Like I said, uh, Trevor Sikama, uh, he kind of said it best. He said that his speed to counter may be the best uh, from a college prospect ever. Like his on the fly reactionary quickness, mentally, physically, it's insane. It's like a quarterback. He has answers for you. He'll he'll switch it up if a tackle figures him out. He just is so smart, so technical, so just perfect in every way. I I really really love him. I would say the only knocks are like his high end athletic traits and maybe bull rushing. He doesn't really try to bull rush, but he he's a big powerful guy. I'm sure he can. And my my pro comp is T.J. Watt. Just the way he wins. You could even drop this guy back in coverage. I think he's one of the better cover edge rushers in this class like he's just a freak i really just get tj watt vibes i think he's going to be very very productive and it, people might be missing him yeah i absolutely love it. you got me wanting to run through a brick wall dan for lots here right now i love, um, I love it i love it. It, it it gets me hyped it gets me excited just you know an intriguing intriguing prospect and you know it was kind of funny that people knocked him for um you know his athleticism traits when he has a 9.3 ras score which is very elite um so like you said there's just other than you know the the weird you know medical history behind him there's just there's really not anything to be worried about it and you know the iq is off the charts with this guy too he's one of the smartest you know defensive players in this entire draft class so yeah, Dan, you got me like, I'm like, I'm like pumped up now. It gave me the energy to like run through a brick wall for this pod. So let's, let's go, man. Let's freaking go. All right. Well, you can run through a brick wall for your boy, but yeah, lots was just insane. Like he was being mocked top five, literally like, you know, a few months ago when we started this mock draft process. So go off, go, go tell us who your number one is. All right. So my number one is Mr. Dallas Turner, the edge from Alabama and if you want to talk about freak athlete and tremendous upside, it's it's Dallas Turner. I mean, this guy tested off the charts. He ran in the sorry, correct me if I I should have had this written down. Was it four fives? Oh, four four six. Yeah, with a nine point four nine RAS score, so a little higher than Law Two. But the bendiness, the athleticism on Dallas Turner is just unmatched for the, you know, um, for the edge rushers in this class. Um, you know, he, he comes off of, a, a season where he had 11 sacks in the sec. He finally got to take over that number one role from Mr. Will Anderson, who was the third overall pick last year. And he just really flourished. And when we're talking about upside, He's he's probably one of the most high upside players where you can really see that double digit sack mark being, you know, generated to the next level. The size is there. The the, the level of competition he played and dominated and thrived against is there. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would say Latu is maybe a more clean prospect and maybe a little bit more sure thing. But I feel like there maybe is a little higher upside just based off the athletic athleticism traits with Dallas Turner. But I mean, one and two, you couldn't go wrong with either one of these guys. They are just, you know, they're freaks. And it's kind of funny that like this year, they're like, you could, we're kind of getting like almost like a hate towards the, the edge rushers and the defensive side of the ball. But there's some there's some damn good players in this draft on the defensive side of the ball, man. Oh, yeah. These guys definitely hold their own. They'd be top five players unanimously and in most other drafts, a few of these guys, really. So, yeah, really love Dallas Turner um, as well. You know, he's that freak athlete. He's he's a lot more raw than Latu. I would say that's why I have Latu over him. And he, he is a lot more raw right now as a football player. But, man, the sky really is the limit. I would say he's got the best, like, movement and bend of any of these edge rushers. It's really Fluid looks like Von Miller moving around, looks like Brian Burns coming out of Florida State. Um, I have him as a number 11 player on my big board, a top 10 grade as well, just right behind lots. You absolutely love him, could totally see him, you know, being a top 10 pick, being above lots of just because of that injury situation. He he feels like a Falcon. I would be surprised, honestly, if the Falcons didn't take him. He's perfect for Raheem Morris, just a freaky, freaky athlete that you want to you want to draft and, and, you know, play with the tools because he's, he's got them all. And it's a good transition into my uh, edge too. It is Dallas Turner. He's right next to Latu. Just, you know, they're really, really good prospects. Turner kind of feels like that Will Anderson last year with even more tools. And, you know, this offensive class is so stacked. He's barely being talked about as a top 10 pick. So 
stacked, stacked class. I really love Dallas Turner. Incredibly productive in the SEC. You know, 89.3 pass rush Gary last year. Not really much more you can ask for a guy. No, not at all. And then, you know, if we transition to my number two, which is law two, it's just a flip-flop between the two of us. But um, kind of a funny little little side note that I had was I have these guys graded way the hell higher uh, than Trayvon Walker, who went number one a couple of years ago. And, you know, you know, these guys probably should both be and find themselves in the top 10, but they probably won't, which is just wild. You know, it's just it's just the way, you know, and how, like you said, how stacked the offense is. Um, but not it's only just, that, yeah. I think Chop Robinson might be better than Trayvon Walker as a prospect. Yeah, it's just crazy. And to think that Trayvon Walker was the number one pick, you know, and these guys, you know, the tape is so much better that I feel like they're, they're better athletes. They're better prospects. They're, they're more sure things than, than Trayvon Walker was. I mean, everyone said Trayvon Walker was a freak and, you know, he's the best thing since sliced bread. And I can't, I mean, I can't believe he went over Aiden Hutchinson. It was just wild to me. <laughs> that was, Don't, that was a mistake, but that's just Trent Balky <laughs> things, man. Don't ask me anything about Trent Balky. Yeah, wild, 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 wild stuff there for sure. All right, Dan, you want to transition to your number three pass rusher? Yep. Spoiler alert: we both have the same number three. He's kind of just that that consensus number three, just that really good all around edge rusher, uh, Jared Verse out of Florida State. He's been here for a while. You know, could have came out of the draft last year, was in top ten pick mock draft discussions before coming back to college and and you know having that really good almost undefeated season for Florida State so or did they go undefeated totally random I think I think they did they they went undefeated and they lost obviously they lost one game I think because they because they played Louisville in the bowl game now this is totally just a random side engine but yeah, we're gonna have to look that one up. I can't it seems like they were 13 and 0 and missed the like or 12 and 0 and missed the college football playoffs. But then they like lost in their bowl game. But did they lose in their bowl game? Oh, they they lost in their bowl game. I'm just totally tripping. All right. Just totally disregard me. I thought they beat Louisville, but all right. That's that's random. Um, Jared Verse, you know, just coming off a, a really good career at Florida State, just a bull in a China shop. He's ripped, he's massive, um, he's very sound run defender. I will say I came into his tape with the perception that he was the best run defender in the class. And maybe it's a bold take. Maybe I'm a casual and I needed to watch more games of him. But I thought he was a worse run defender than Latu. I I would say I have a B minus run defense grade on Latu and like a C plus on verse. I don't know if he was the had the strongest base for how big he is. I thought he would, you know, kind of hold his own uh, better and not get pushed back. He he does get pushed back a little bit, but as a pass rusher, he's really really solid. I I would say he's underrated as a pass rusher. His bull rush is on a different planet. It's by far the best in this class. And there's a there's a bull rush specialist in Chris Braswell, but Jared Verse is just a, a monster, a literal bull. And I, I would say the the last knock I have on him, not to talk down on him too much, but he's not like the bendiest. He's definitely not as fluid and bendy as, you know, Turner and Latsu. He, he, he doesn't really have like a dip. He's a little bit more clunky and less fluid. So I don't, I don't love his athleticism, but he does get the job done. He's going to be a very good starter in the NFL day one on the edge. And he, he's going to be productive and, and just, Bull rush his way into sacks. I have a top 20 grade on him. He's my number 20 player in the class. So a little bit behind the other guys, but how do you feel about him? Oh, I really, I really like Jared Verse and just a guy who's, you know, been in college for a while. So he's got, I feel like he's, he's ready to rock and roll. He's going to be 24, which is just kind of a knock for me, even though it's not like he's old or anything, but he's going to be 24 um, going into his um, rookie. Well, in, in the middle of his rookie season, which is a little older for, for a prospect. Um, but I mean, he had three years at Florida State with elite PFF grades all over 80. And like you said, he's a very powerful player. His speed to power move it can, is very devastating. He's got a violent, violent hands. Um, first step explosiveness is already NFL caliber. Um, you know, but he's he's ready. He's a plug and play starter. You know, there's 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 I don't feel like there's a lot of developing. I feel like we know what we're getting out of Jared Verse. Um, but yeah, I mean, he can shed blocks quick. He is super fast. He's got a good swim move, but yeah, I just feel like the the high end athleticism and upside with him is, is, is less than the, than the top two guys. Yeah, hundred percent, but you're very confident. You're getting just a really solid starting edge rusher day one. Like I can't even stress enough how good this class is the whole first round. You're getting like a, 
you know, any of these players could be all pros. I could see any of these three edge rushers we just talked about being all pros as rookies in the right situation. So really good class. Love Jared Verse. He's been in these, you know, top three discussions for years now and happy he came out um, with that. Do you want to, since you have the same uh, edge three as me, do you want to move on to edge four who we both kind of have the same as well, or do you want to talk about Verse a little bit more? You know, I mean, it's the testing, you know, nine five is is no knock on the athleticism. It just doesn't feel like the the, the high end traits are quite there with verse. Um, but no, let's uh, let's move on to our next guy with who might have the most upside in the entire you know entire draft class. Yeah, speaking of upside, speaking of a crazy crazy mover, it is this guy right here, Trop Robinson. He kind of has special bend. Uh, I would say the bend that he has only comes around once every three to five years. It really is Von Miller-esque when you watch the tape. You will get some flashbacks of those legendary uh, speed rushers because he has just crazy dip bend, the way he can move his body, contort his body to get around those edge or those tackles is really impressive. And you can kind of easily project him to just being a stud in the NFL. Definitely doesn't have a large body of work in college, but you know, he was very productive when he was out there. He doesn't have the most snaps, but the last two years, he has a 90.8 and a 90.6 uh, PFF grade. He finished with a 92.3 pass rush grade last year. So he's very productive when he's out there. And I feel like that's a reason that he's falling is because he, he doesn't have, you know, the most snaps under his belt, but he's been good for, you know, a really good Big Ten team. And, and this isn't even to talk about the traits. He, he ran the fastest 40 of any edge rusher at a 4.48. That's silly. <laughs> That's just completely silly. He has traits that really no one in this class possesses, like a once in a, a few years uh, type traits. He's crazy Ben, just a special mover, uh, a special athlete, so fluid. I, I really love him. He's raw as hell, very raw, but I think he's less raw than people think. Yeah, I mean, he is just, I mean, it's all there, man. It's it's all there on tape. You can just, you just, somebody's got to take this talent and be like, you know what, I can I can turn this into something great. And that's just what Chop Robinson is. And I can so I see the vision. I just I just feel like he needs the right coach. And almost like, you know, I wanted to point this out, like D'Amico Ryans, if he was to go into like the Texans, um, whether he's there with their, you know, their second round pick so they could be available, but that would be a perfect situation and a perfect coach in the right defensive scheme for Chop Robinson to really, really thrive. Um but yeah, I mean, if you're taking a guy with the most high end, you know, upside, the most athletic traits in this entire draft class, it is Chop Robinson. And those elite grades are there and it's there in the run game and it's there in the passing game. I mean, maybe he's a little bit more slender of a frame, but I mean, this guy, I mean, he, he, he's special, man. He is, he's very, very special. I mean, he, he, he has a really good stance. He gets really low. He's explosive off his front foot. Um, but yeah, it's just it's just raw, raw tools that that some you know some coach is gonna salivate over and be like, yeah, I can make this guy great, and I, and I really really hope he goes into the right uh, defensive system. Yeah, and I've got a top twenty five grade on Chop. He's my number twenty four player in this class. Definitely higher than you'll really see. Uh, he, I think he should go in the top twenty five, one hundred percent. I think he he could uh, end up there because a coach could fall in love with the traits and and want to work with him. Yeah, overall, just a very raw player. He needs more plays under his belt. Needs to develop the run defense, develop the tool belt of, you know, pass rush moves. Um, my number five player that I'm about to talk about might be a little bit better than him right now as a player, but the sky really is the limit. The the movement is just way too valuable for Chop. I absolutely love him. Um, with that, do you want to get on to our fives? Let's do it. Yeah, let's, let's see your number five. All right, moving on to my number five edge rusher sticking here in, in Utah. We're going to talk about Jonah Ellis. He just had an incredible, incredible kind of breakout season this year before getting hurt. He's had an interesting path. He, his dad is Luther Ellis, a former NFL player. He has three brothers in the NFL, so that's always kind of a plus. You know, when these players have that NFL bloodline, you know they're good athletes. Or He's a really good athlete. I think he would have tested really well athletically if he was able to um, kind of perform in the combine, but he had a really bad arm injury at the end of the year. They were forced to shut him down, and he was playing. He played a few games with the arm injury, and you could tell he was hurt, but he was still, you know, playing good, getting getting production. He's he's fun. He's very productive, um, toolsy, toolsier than I thought. When I first kind of watched him, I thought he was more of a 
just a sound run defender guy. But the more I got to him, he really is a good athlete. He's he's fast. He's quick. He's got a really good get off. He's relentless. Feels like Max Crosby sometimes. I would say I'm just throwing out crazy comps, but like I would say he has some like TJ Watt vibes as well. Just the way that his his pass rush is so refined. He's so smart, and he's only. How, how old is Jonah? He's only 20 years old right now, about to turn 21. So he's the youngest of any of these guys. And yeah, I think it's pretty impressive. I'm, I'm pretty excited uh, for him. I think he's going to be instant production in the NFL for wherever he goes. He was insanely productive for Utah. Relentless pass rusher. Um, just super solid, super smart. Hammers for hands. I love him. Yeah, no, really, really fun player. And and one thing, he, he was not on my top five. Um but I mean, just just a fun prospect, man. I mean, uh, he wins with his with his pass rush moves, and he was not afraid to to show it. Um, at the combine, I watched an interview with Jonah Ellis, and he's like, he was giving away all his all his moves. He's like, and he was so confident because most guys don't really, oh, you know, well, I hit him with a chop, and then I go to a spin. But if he does this, and he, he's he's a guy who understands the game. He his 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 football bloodline runs deep with brothers in the NFL, with a former dad who's an NFL player. Um. But it's just it's just all there. It's a guy with tremendous football IQ, um, great football production in his final year at Utah. Just really took a breakout year this year. But just it was funny, man. It was just funny because a lot of guys are usually timid. No, oh, I don't like to give away my pass rush moves. But he's like, no, I have no, I, I have no problem telling people what I'm going to do because if 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 you counter with this, then I'm gonna I'm gonna counter with a you know with a chop and a spin. Or if you do this, you line up in that, then I'm gonna bull rush you and I'm gonna beat you there. But if you if you're ready for my bull rush, then I'm gonna do this. It was just it was kind of fun, you know. You could just see the IQ come off of this guy, and I you know I absolutely loved it. Yeah, you love to see if these guys are, are studying the game. He's he's another guy kind of like Law too. He definitely studies that that pass rushing encyclopedia. And yeah, like I said, incredibly productive. 13 sacks last year, and his season was cut short with that injury. He was playing a few games injured. Um, he had a 90.1 pass rush grade at 20 years old. So yeah, the more I watch this guy, the, the more I genuinely do get excited. I'm pretty sure that he'll have a nice role in the NFL. Could start sooner rather than later at that young age and be instantly productive. So I. Really like Jonah. Think he's being slept on. Don't be surprised to hear his name come off the draft board a little bit earlier than you are thinking. Baltimore Ravens. Round one, you're thinking? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not saying it could happen. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good fit. It feels feels right. Feels like a Raven. Feels like a Steeler. Feels like that AFC North uh, edge rusher. Yeah, just that tough physical brand of football right there. Yeah, the AFC North. You love it. Yeah, we're gonna pair him up with Miles Garrett, uh, but yeah, let's let's hear your edge five. All right, so my edge five is gonna be. And this is gonna be a hot one, man. This is, this is gonna be a hot take for a lot of people. Uh, it is Mo Camara from Colorado State, um, and I'll be honest with you, I fell in love with this guy in October. If you want to watch a fun fun tape on this guy, tune into the um, to the Colorado game, Colorado State versus Colorado. And Mo Camaro was the most dominant, best player on the field in that game. And when we watch every defensive snap, he was different. Um, a very coachable, coachable athlete. I'm just going to start off with that. A guy who's, who's in, you know, improved every single year through college with a 69 to a 79 to an 85 PFF grade coming off of a 14 sack season. He reminds me, and you'll agree with me on this one because we've talked about it, Shaquille Barrett. He's not a big guy. He's not a big physical freak. He's 6'1", 250 pounds, but he's quick, man. He ran a 4.5. It was in the 4.5s at the NFL Combine. He tested off the charts, but he wins with his power. He's very compact. He's very low to the ground and very, very compact. Um, yeah, 4.57. Second fastest. Yeah, second fastest um, behind Chop. Um, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, second fastest behind Chop. But yeah. Just, I mean, there's it's a compact loaded. Just, I mean, this guy is a heat sinking missile of muscle, um, and he gets after the pass rusher, and he gets or he gets after the quarterback. Excuse me, and he gets after him in a hurry. And you know what? He doesn't have, you know, he's not the most toolsy guy, but yeah, he wins with his power, and it's just, I don't, I don't know what it is, man. I don't know what it is about him, but there's just something. There's just something about Mo Camara that just fascinates me. Um, and I, I do see, I mean, people are going to knock him for his size, 
but there's just so much power. There's so much speed there. He's a very smart football player. I even saw them line him up, believe it or not. He lined up in the interior defensive line on some snaps and just immediately beat the guards um, with his first step. And I mean, it's just, it's fun. I mean, this is, this is a very hot take and a guy who's, you know, one of my draft crushes, but what do you think of Mo Camara? It is a hot take. It is definitely higher than you'll see anywhere, but I do kind of agree that he, when you watch him, he does kind of have that it factor. He, you can kind of tell he's going to be at the very least a pass rush specialist and a, a very good one at that in the NFL. I personally, because he's such an outlier with that six, one height, I do have him as my edge 12. I, I will say I still have him as a top 100 player. I love a lot of edges in this class, but yeah, that 40, the second fastest in the class is definitely a benefit. And you look at the RAS, it really is everything outside of the size is completely green, the explosiveness, just everything. He's going to be really, really good. I comp him to Shaq Barrett as well. That was instant when I saw him at the Colorado State, the undersized knock, the everything. He's just a, a really good pass rush specialist at the very least had a 91.2 pass rush grade last year, 85.9 PFF grade. He's really solid. I, I do like you calling your shot on him, you know, having a, a good role in the NFL. And I, I can see the upside of him being a Shaq Barrett and, you know, being really good for 10 years. Yeah, no. And a guy, you know, who given the situation, if he has to drop in coverage, you know, has the instincts, has the speed, you know, to, you know, to, to, to run with those tight ends, you know, he's faster than most tight ends and he, you know, he's physical, he can get in their face, but you know, just, just a very versatile guy. He's not going to be down on the ground lining up. Usually he's going to be, he's going to be a stand up edge rusher and he's going to have to beat you with speed and quickness, but I do see it. I see it with Mo Camara. I do see it. And I feel like he's being very undervalued and very overlooked because of his size but you know i think i think this guy is going to be you know one of the guys we talk about for a long time on sundays yeah i love it i think he will uh find a home and, and he'll be a fan favorite for sure a relentless pass for sure a uh, really fun athlete i love camara let's move on to our honorable mentions a few uh honorable mentions that i do want to talk about my number six edge rusher is braylon trice he led the country in pressures that's kind of a important stat kind of a decent stat that's a uh, kind of telling that he's been really good for the last few years for washington he's got a really high motor he's persistent he's consistent just super solid excellent technique i like braylon trice uh marshawn neeland i have him at seven he's really really solid the more i watch him he's got the 22nd best RAS score ever with a 9.87 for I mean that's just crazy he's a crazy athlete he can play interior defensive line and edge so I do like that I think he can be dominant in either role really I really just like Neyland I'm, I'm confident he can be good and then I have Adisa Isaac at eight just that Jonathan Cooper type of really solid edge three uh, maybe edge two really good run defender can drop in coverage can just do it all really good all around uh, how do you like those guys anyone else you want to mention you know, Adisa Isaac was a guy that I, I definitely wanted to do. Just another, another. I don't know what Penn State breed, breeds him in their in their football players in general, but yeah, a very very exciting prospect. And yeah, Braylon Trice not making the top five is definitely tough. Um, and Chris Braswell, another guy, another big guy from Alabama. Um, I don't feel like he's had the best off season, but a, you know, a guy who you know quietly had a thirteen sack season in the SEC um and you know a physical freak um but you know chris braswell don't sleep on him either uh, definitely a day two player right there 100 percent. i have chris braswell at nine actually austin booker out of kansas at 10 he's got a lot of upside uh gabriel murphy out of 11 really really solid i love him um yeah xavier thomas is going to be solid as well but with that let's go on to interior defensive line let's talk some interior defensive linemen the big big uglies and let's start off with mine number one it's going to be byron murphy absolutely love this guy one of my favorite defensive players in this class he's, he's up there with a lot too they're neck and neck he's my number nine player on my oh no sorry Byron Murphy's my number 10 player on my big board a lot too is nine so have top 10 grades on both I have damn near a blue chip grade on Byron Murphy if it wasn't for just being a little a little bit undersized as you see with that RAS score he's perfect everywhere except for just that size is lacking just a little bit it's really not bad though I saw some plays where they played him in the five tech uh, and they have Tavondre Sweat on their team. So he can really do anything. He's a stud. I absolutely love uh, Byron Murphy. I really just get Chris Jones vibes when I watch him. And I know I'm throwing out these crazy comps, but I really like this defensive line class. I really like some of these players at the top. And 
I think if if he's in the right situation, if everything clicks, he has that Chris Jones upside. He is a crazy good pass rusher, has great fluidity for how big he is. He's really got all the pass rush moves. I really liked his pass rush more than anyone in the class. Him and Johnny Newton, both of them are just insane pass rushers. Hard to kind of nitpick between the two, but he's really fun. I I, I really love him. He's he's damn near blue chip interior defensive lineman for me. And I think he can develop into one of the premier, one of the real premier uh, pass rushing interiors. I 100% agree with you. He's a tremendous player. Um, these pass rushers, man, and they're on the interior defensive line, no slouch again. Um, a very, very impressive group with, you know, these top guys, um, just incredible, incredible athletes coming from the interior, which is becoming a premium position when you got guys like Chris Jones making $23 million a year, Mutabike, or Justin Mutabike making $21 million a year. It's becoming one of those premium, premium positions where we could see one of these guys go. And, you know, I a lot of these these interior alignment I have them graded higher than a lot of um a lot of the edge guys I just I think it's a deeper better class of interior than edge even though those guys on edge are no are no slouch I just I absolutely love the interior of this um of this class and yeah Byron Murphy man special special player physical strong point of attack I mean once he gets his hands on you he is violent man um the upper body strength is unreal and I, I love the comp to Chris Jones. Why not, man? Why not? I mean, this guy is probably going to go top, you know, top 20 no matter what. But, I mean, could be as high as number nine to the Bears, I could see. Um, and I could see how teams really fall in love with him. And and the two, and him and Trevante Sweat paired was just unfair. That, that interior for Texas was just unmatched. And it kind of reminds me of, like, Deron Payne um, and Jonathan Allen, uh, the Bama boys. This is These are the Texas this boys so you know just just an incredible incredible defensive line duo hey with that whole dui situation you could probably easily get murphy and sweat both in the nfl and just just run it back but yeah i mean <laughs> i think the big conversation right now is is kind of byron murphy versus johnny new and i personally completely love them both and fine with either one being number one but i have murphy higher because i think he's a much much better run defender i think he's maybe the best run defender like outside of you know like the Tavondre Sweats the run defense specialist the Tyler Davis is I think Byron Murphy is just like really really solid in run defense he had the 80.5 run defense grade and he's he's just really stout there so I really love him um do you want to get on to your number one guy yeah my number one is going to be you know the one and two debate right here really um and it's Jerzon Newton who I kind of valued, you know, a little bit more of a pass rush upside. I mean, he absolutely dominated as a pass rusher. Two years of elite PFF grades, 2022, 91.5 PFF grade, and then 2023, 84.9 with eight sacks. Um, but a guy, I mean, he's special, man. He, he's very special. He possesses possesses very quick feet, very quick hands, uh, a motor that never stops, man. I mean, he is just go, 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 go. And I believe, oh, if you turn on the Penn State tape with Jerzon Newton, man, I mean, it's his team is so bad, but Jerzon Newton was the best player on the field that day. And just the motor was going nonstop. It looked like he was the only one that wanted to win that game. Um, but yeah, I mean, explosive first step, elite pass stretching skills. I thought he's very, you know, I think he's very elite in the run game as well. Um, just a guy that I don't see very many flaws to his game and just really uplifted the team around him. But yeah, I mean, these one and two, you know, and I have a different two. Um, another guy that I'm very, very excited with. But I mean, Jerzon Newton, man, I just, I see it with him. And he was a guy that was like top 10 prospect, no matter what, just like we were talking about a couple, couple months ago. And I don't know if it's prospect fatigue. I don't, I don't know what it is. I mean, PFF is not sleeping on Jerzon Newton. They still have him on their big board at number eight. Um, but it seems like a lot of people are just dropping him down the draft board. And I'm just, I'm scratching my head. Cause I don't really understand why. Yeah. I would say I would, the reason he's dropping is maybe just his size is a little bit you know, a little bit smaller than, than some of the other guys. I perfectly comp him to Kalijah Kansi. I don't know how you feel about that, but him being such a good pass rusher, like he is a real pass rush specialist. He can, he can, you know, he's a big guy, but he's creative as a pass rusher. He has a great pass rush moves. I would say he has a little bit better of a pass rush grade than Byron Murphy, and he's just 
you know, very solid. He's he can shake you. He can move so well for being that big. So I like him a lot. I have really no knocks on him. I have a top 20 grade on uh, Johnny. Um, totally fine with any team taking him in the top 20, top 30. I think he should uh, be in, you know, top 25 pick. I don't think he should be falling like he is in really most mock drafts that you see. He's going end a first round. So, yeah, I, I don't agree that there's some – I don't agree with the prospect fatigue. I think he's definitely just being slept on when it comes to the NFL draft. Um, yeah, I guess the only reason I have Young over him is, is Newton's a little bit less well-rounded completely in the run game. He plays a little bit more stiff, a little bit less fluid, but – Love, love them both. Uh, I think, you know, it, it definitely could be kind of the flavor that you want. It could be down to that. They're both really, really elite. I, I love them both. Yeah, 100% agree. Super exciting prospects. Um, I know Jerzon is your number two. Should we move on to my number two, which is going to be a very, very hot take for some people? Um, Let's, let's go. Let's hear it. I'm scared. It's Mr. Braden Fisk. Defensive interior defensive line man from the Florida State. Um, I'll tell you, man, Braden Fisk is just he moves different. He moves at an elite level. He tore up the combine, he tore up the senior bowl. He does all these things at an incredible level. He's impressed me at every step of the prospect, or sorry, every every step of the process so far. Um Three years, you know, of grades all above 70. Um, 2022 was his, one, it was his best year with an 86.6 and eight sacks. This year he goes to 73.9 and six sacks. He did transfer schools. Um, he did transfer to Florida State late in his career. But I don't know what it is, man. Another guy like Mo Kamara, who I feel different about, I, 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 it's borderline crazy to do this, and it's, it's not fair to do this to a prospect at all. But – he reminds me of Aaron Donald. Just just the size, the physicality, the quickness, the footwork, the aggressive, aggressive hands. It's just it's it's different. It's different to these other prospects. And and he, it seems like he just he wants it more. He wants it more than these other guys. And I can just feel that and see it through him. And like I said, you know, he goes to the to the Reese's senior bowl. And he's he was one of the best players on the on the defensive side of the um, of the ball. And in the game, he showed up and he played incredible. I mean, he was beating all the competition there. It was just no problem. And he was asked to switch teams, you know, the day of um, of the of the game. And he just you know no chemistry, not knowing the play calls, goes in there and just dominates. Um, goes to the combine, absolutely dominates, kills it. His speed, his strength, it's just all there with this guy. And the hands, I mean, yeah, you, you see it a 9.89 RAS score, which is just incredible. I mean, everything's incredible. The only things, I mean, he would almost be a perfect 10 if it wasn't for the height, the weight. Um, and I mean, 26 reps on the bench press is is no slouch. Um, but I mean, the the short shuttle, the three cone, the broad, the vertical, the 10 yard split, which is so important for these defensive interior prospects. It's just all at that elite, elite level. I mean, 98th percentile, 96th percentile, 96th percentile, 94th percentile, 96th, 7th percentile. It's just, it's all there for the guy, man. And I just, I can see it and I can project it at the next level. And, you know, pairing him next to, you know, a true big run stuffing, one technique defender like a Travandre Sweat, you know, so just picture that. And I just, Braden Fisk is is that for me, man. I can just I can just see it. Yeah, I totally agree with what you said. He does move like Aaron Donald. If you just watch him move, it, it is fair to say that he does move like Aaron Donald. He you know took the league by storm uh, during the combine when you just watch him. I mean, he's it's not great. Aaron Donald. I mean, no. I I shouldn't throw that out there. No one, no one is is no one is Aaron Donald. I mean, Aaron Donald is is a one of one, the best you know interior defensive lineman all all, all time, but. There's similar traits that I'm throwing out there. It's just he, the movement and the traits and the wanting it as bad as Aaron Donald. I, I just, I see it. Yeah. The movement special, the athleticism is, is crazy. He's a, he's, he's, I'll talk about his backstory, I guess. So first of all, on tape, he literally plays 1000 miles per hour. It's insane. The way he explodes off the ball. It's special. He is a special get off. He, he just plays so fast. He is like like you see here the 20th best RAS score ever for a defensive tackle that's 
insane. He had the best 40 for a defensive tackle in the combine at a 478, the best vertical jump, best broad jump. So he's a crazy explosive defensive tackle. And he's so fluid for how big he is. It's kind of that's that's why he looks like Aaron Donald when he moves, is he's just way too fluid. Shouldn't be as fluid as he is. I guess the knock would be like I, I have him down at, at at defensive tackle four. It's 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 weird because he was at Western Michigan for four years, maybe five. And he he was there, like he was there, you know, he never really produced too well. And he had expectations though. He was supposed to be the, I don't know if you know this, but he was supposed to be the best defensive player in this class. Like by the time it was his time to go into the draft last year, even he was supposed to be the best defensive player in the class. And he never, never really lived up to that at Western Michigan, transferred to Florida State. He had a good season this year for sure. He had a solid season with that really good defensive line, but that's just kind of, what scares me he's been here for five years now he's been this crazy prospect out of high school you know in college now and and he's he's a crazy athlete we know that he's like brian Reese athlete i just I, I just don't know if the production is is fully there and it fully gets me like fully there with him i just don't know if i'm fully fully there with this guy but he's a crazy athlete and you can't deny the movement yeah, I just say he ended his career very strong. The first half at Florida State, it was like one pressure, two pressures, two pressures, one pressure. And then it all of a sudden started to become five, six pressures, eight pressures, seven pressures. And he just finished extremely strong. But yeah, it just it wasn't the yeah, the consistency is the scare. You felt like he should have produced at a lot higher level all throughout college, especially being at Western Michigan. Um, but yes, I, I, I understand that side of things 100%. Anything else you want to say in your boy before we move on? Uh, let's 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 move on to your number three. All right, stores is astronomically high on Braden Fisk. I have a top fifty grade <laughs> on him. He's my number fifty four player. What is your like? If you were just to kind of throw out a like ranking, I, he's my number fifty four player. What would he be for you? Like top twenty five? No, one hundred percent. I was gonna say he he would be my twenty fourth. Um, with with what I actually have, I do have a big board as well. Oh. I don't have it pulled up, but I do remember I have Braden Braden Fisk at at twenty four on my big board. Okay, so yeah, Stores is the poster boy for <laughs> Braden Fisk. If you guys need any Braden Fisk questions, just just head up Stores. He's, he's got you. But yeah, let's move on to my defensive interior number three, Chris Jenkins out of NF, out of Michigan. He's got that NFL bloodline. His dad uh, played in the NFL. I'll just pull up his RAS score right here compared to his dad. It was a long time, honestly, NFL legend. Uh, really, really solid starter, if you remember him, uh, back for the Jets and Panthers, so. I would say like he's kind of a similar player, but as you see right here with the RAS score, he's just a much better athlete. I I think Chris Jenkins like kind of summarized this quickly. He's just really good in everything. I wouldn't say that there's a knock in Chris Jenkins' game, not really a weakness. He's just super solid all around. It might go a little bit, you know, under the radar. Some some of these crazy athletes might go ahead of him because of that, but I think he's underrated as a pass rusher. He's, he's a solid athlete. He's got good burst, um, good get off. I, I think he's got a good explosiveness off the ball. And he's really good in run defense. I would say he's more of a run defender. He had an 82.3 run defense grade last year. And he's a big, big boy, as you can see. So, I don't know. I just think he's really solid all around. I think he's going to be a solid three-down defensive tackle for a long time. And, I mean, that's got to be somewhat valuable in the NFL. So, I or yeah. So, I, I just like this defensive interior three ranking for him because I, I really think he's going to be starting in the NFL for a long time. So why not? Yeah. Um, love, 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 love Chris Jenkins. Um, I mean, like you kind of said, he's a, he's a jack of all trades, but he's really doesn't feel like he's mastered anything yet. And it even still feels like there's a lot left that, you know, he leaves a lot left to be desired. You know, there's a lot left on the bone um, with Chris Jenkins, but like you said, it's just, it's all there, but you just feel like he can do it at so much more high of a level. Um, but yeah, I mean, he is a, he's a true run defender at heart, um, Chris Jenkins, and some might say he's a little undersized to be a true run defender. Um, but the pass, you know, the pass rushing ability is totally, totally there with Chris Jenkins. This just the production has not been incredible yet, but the grades are elite for Chris Jenkins. The 72, 80.7, 82.7 against hard competition of football. Um, but he, he'll hold up there. With the best, and like you said, he's just going to be a solid three down. I mean, you don't have to take this guy off the field. You don't have to take him down on passing downs or or, or early down runs. He can stay on the field for everything. Um, and you know, he was on Bruce Feltman's freak list. They call him the mutant of all mutants. Um, they, he's just he's just you know incredibly strong, 
incredibly physical at the point of attack. Um, but yeah, Chris Jenkins Jr. He, he's going to be fun, man. He's going to be fun on Sundays. I just, I absolutely love him as a prospect. Yeah, it's really just his size. Like you said, he really is just lacking the size. That's it. He would be a lot higher of a pick. I wouldn't be surprised if he's an early second round pick. Don't be surprised mm-hmm. if him goes a fifth pick in the second round of the Chargers, you know, um, go back with Minter. I feels like he, he's going to go high. It just feels like NFL coaches are going to like this guy and want to be working with this guy for a long time. So really love Chris Jenkins. Don't need to talk off on Chris Jenkins too much, but do you want to go on to your number three? Yeah, yeah, and one more thing about Chris Jenkins. I mean, they say pound for pound, he's the strongest player in this draft. Which for a, yeah, defensive interior lineman, you love to hear it. You love to see it. And on Bruce Feldman's freak list, sign me up for Chris Jenkins. Absolutely love this guy. NFL teams will. Um, moving on to stores is uh, number three. It's someone that we've already talked about. But but explain the the process of Fisk over over Byron Murphy. Is it just the, is, is just the movement just too much for you? You can't get past it? Too, uh, too just- good? I love the traits. I love the high upside. And not to say that Byron Murphy doesn't have that because he's a physical freak as well. There's no slouch. I just, I just given the right system, and I would love to see this. I'd love to see Braden Fisk go to the Rams just, <laughs> just to be Aaron Donald's replacement. I would absolutely love it. Um, but yeah, I just, I, I value his traits and his athleticism. And you know. I'd be I'd be lying to you if I just said there wasn't just a little bit of that gut feeling and that intuition that I that I'm trusting a little bit more. Um, but I mean Byron Murphy, man, like I said, the teams are gonna value him more because he's more of a sure thing. He has the production. He you've seen it on film more, you know. He did it at an elite level of football. Um, but yeah, and I would be, you know, I'd be a complete liar to you if I didn't say it's more of a gut and intuition thing that I'm going off of. Yeah, I respect you calling your shot. I probably should have called mine a little bit better on a guy I really love, 20-year-old Michael Hall out of Ohio State. We'll talk about him with the honorable mentions. He's my number six. Breaks my heart. But let's go on to my number five because my number four is Braden Fisk, who we already talked about. Don't need to talk about him more. We yapped about him forever. Covered him but... honey well. <laughs> what was and that? then my number four, who is Chris Jenkins Jr., who we've already covered, the mutant of all mutants. Um, but yeah, let's let's move on to your number five, Dan. We're, we're there. I already yapped about those guys, but we'll go on to my number five interior defensive lineman. It's an interesting one. It's Darius Robinson out of Missouri. Interested to see what you think about this, but I personally have him as a defensive lineman, as a defensive tackle at least, because you know he he, he did play his whole college career uh, before last year. I will kind of give a backstory. He started out as a defensive tackle for three years at Missouri before moving to edge last year and really kind of having his best statistical year. He He's just a great athlete. He's a crazy mover. Um, he kind of tested uh, well in the combine. He blew up the senior bowl because of how he moves. And I think the thing is, like, the reason I have him at interior defensive line is because I, I just think that movement and that speed is so much more impressive on the interior. I think he stands out more when he's going against those bigger interior offensive linemen. I think he can really be more effective in there. And when he's on the edge, I personally think as a prospect, he just is kind of another guy. So, I, I want to put him somewhere where I think that he can be like a legit, you know, impact and, and really, really maybe dominant even because he moves so well that I think he could be a dominant pass rusher from the inside. But he he has an anchor against the run because he played defensive tackle for three years already. So maybe I'm crazy for wanting to move him back after already moving him last year to edge. But I, I just think interior defensive lines, the best like value position to play him at um in the nfl because i think that's where you're going to get the mismatches and i think he's going to be really just beating people and he's kind of a one-trick pony on the outside he just spams the hell out of swim moves and do the swim moves from the inside i feel like that works a little bit better with those bigger guys so i don't know i think this is a good call maybe i'll be totally off and he's a great edge rusher but we'll see I love it. I love I love you having him on this list and that's what people kind of feel awkward their eyes is he a defensive interior is he an edge well I feel like you can have the versatility of playing in both, but yeah, I a hundred percent agree. I think his more natural position is in the interior. And I think he's going to, you know, be better at the interior come the next level. Um, but I mean, he's as big as most of these defensive linemen on our list, you know, if not bigger, I mean, maybe he's a little lighter in size at 296, but he's six, five, 296, you know, elite PFF grades, nine sacks. So the, you know, the rushing ability is all there for him. And another guy who is, Senior Bowl MVP, Senior Bowl standout, just really had a good week down there at Mobile. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, I think his game projects better in the interior because I think he's going to be better lining up against the guards and, you know, physically overpowering them, uh, you know, being maybe a little bit quicker footed with that, with that swim move. I mean, I feel like he's got a good bull rush as well. I mean, um, but yeah, against single blockers in the interior, I just, I see it better. I, I see it better there and I feel like he's going to progress and be better. Um, so I a hundred percent agree with you there, but you know, a very, very fun piece to your defense. Cause you know, on, you know, certain rundowns and stuff, kick him on outside. Cause he's going to hold that anchor on the edge and be a very, very good run defender on the edge. Um, I don't see the high end upside with pass rushing on the edge. I feel like he's going to get, you know, outmanned by some of these elite tackles at the, at the next level. Um, but I do see it from the interior and I, and I love, I love the versatility that he, that he's played on the edge. And I think given certain, you know, early downs, if, if you know, if you're bringing him on, on, on the edge, I love that. But um, you know, I, I feel like he does fit as a true interior um, defensive lineman. Yeah, very versatile. You love how versatile he can be. Definitely wanted to fit him in here so we could talk about him. But yeah, you love that anchor. Like you said, he could he has the experience at defensive tackle. He has that that natural anchor on the edge if you want to play him there. But I, I do think it's more valuable to kind of make him just an OP gadget on the inside uh, as a pass rusher because like you said, he size-wise measures up with all these guys that we've talked about uh, as in the interior. So really love him. I do want to talk about uh, your number five real quick. It's interesting. It's a... I guess hey, we made talking. this list before the DUI. <laughs> we made. Oh, I'd like to say. Well, actually, wait. Did I? Well, I honestly, remember. I don't. I don't care that he's on your list. I'm just saying it's an interesting discussion. I would say it's definitely fair to have him. He's a freak. He was the best defensive lineman in the uh, in all college football last year. So I'll, I'm not. I'm, I don't really care about that. Yeah, I mean now now there is character concerns with him, of course. But I mean to come away from the the athlete. Um, that Trevondre Sweat is at 6'4", 362 pounds, man. I mean, he is the best one technique. He's the best. And he's the only, I would say, I go so far as to say he's the, you know, he's the, well, obviously, no, no doubt about it, the best nose tackle. But there's not many nose tackles in this draft. There's not many guys who are that true one technique, you know, that that take on the, the dual set of blockers, you know. I mean, this guy eats up space. He is, he is a, he's a people mover. He is a space eater, and he's obviously the best at that because you can't teach size. You can't teach how big this guy is. I mean, he's going to plug up the the middle of that line, um, but he's very, very underrated um, in, the, uh, in the pass rushing side of things. He's actually a damn good pass rusher. And, you know, Jordan Davis coming out, you know, um, a couple of years ago who went – how high did Jordan Davis go? Was, um, obviously first round, but was it top 15? Uh, I think it was like 12, 13, 14, right around there. Yeah. And, yeah. And I mean, Jordan Davis, um, I think an inch or two taller, but not as not as heavy set as Trevondre Sweat. But Trevondre Sweat's a whole hell of a lot better of a, of a pass rusher. And people were freaking out of, you know, how much of an athlete Jordan Davis was. At Trevondre Sweat's size, I'd argue he's a better pass rusher than Jordan Davis is. I mean, and the grades, man, are in the elite percentile of everything. His run de- run defensive grade, 92. Pass, ru- pass rush win rate for Trevondre Sweat, a 15.3. Um, true pass set, um, or sorry, true pass set, pass rush grade, 80, 88.6. Pass rush grade, 85.3. Run stop grade, 12.8%. I mean, every single thing is at the elite percentile, and... For a guy this big, I don't know, man. It's, he's he's different. He's different, and it's like in this draft class where there's not a lot of you know space eaters, human eaters like Trevondre Sweat. He is so far above the next guy below him at, at nose tackle. So I'll just kind of read off Trevondre Sweat his kind of accolades. Keep in mind he is a dumbass. Don't forget he is a dumbass. Yeah. Don't don't dude, forget that he's definitely just not really all there. Um, it's brutal, man. I mean, dude, you got you got less than thirty days till the NFL draft to not screw this up, and you screw it up. I mean, it's unbelievable. This dude lost himself probably millions of dollars because of that. I mean, people are talking about Trondre Sweat, a high end second round pick. He may he damn near may fall fifth sixth round. I have no idea. I have no idea how teams are gonna assess the situation of what just happened. But I mean, it's. Unreal, dude. Some of these guys and just the little task of just not screwing up before the most important thing of your life. If something, I mean, a DUI, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's dumb. It's, it's, it's so stupid. 
definitely concerning. Like you said, it's right before the most important day of your life. So yeah, it definitely does give you concerns of like, how much does he care? He apparently he told teams that he had a partying phase and he was over with it, done with it. So it will be interesting to see how these teams take him lying to them, I guess. But the player, you know, he won the Outland Trophy winner. Uh, he was the Outland Trophy winner for beat for the best defensive tackle in the country. So, you know, that's a pretty impressive feat for a guy that we're talking about here as a defense interior five. Um, he won the big 12 defensive player of the year. Um, and yeah, like you said, I promise you're just not going to be able to run on this guy. Just look at him. And how are you going to be able to block him in the pass rush game as well? So he he moves you. He's a people mover, was the best defensive lineman in the country this year. Can't really argue with it. Can't really get past that either. Like, you know, with all that off-field stuff, he was completely dominant and that's valuable. It really is valuable. He scores touchdowns because he's got high IQ. He's going to pick up the ball and run with it. They they brought him in on offense. He scored a touchdown. He's a fun player, but definite dumbass. Yeah, a hundred percent. And, you know, um, one thing just, you know, outside of, you know, you know, non-football stuff, but in football stuff is, um, is he, is he conditioned enough? He, is he disciplined enough, you know, to have that conditioning to where he can be a three down player? Is he only, you know, second first down player and you got to get him off the field and so i know that's also a concern for people but i mean minus all that man you can't teach size and this guy is is just you know beef he's just here you know he's a steak dinner um with some potatoes and, and you know add another steak dinner on there with some more potatoes and that's who this guy is you know he's just the, he's the meat of your defense and he's the run stuffer eat up those double teams and create, you know, opportunities for your edge rushers for one-on-ones. Yeah. Moral of the story is, you, I mean, he's an insane, insane. He was the best defensive tackle in college football last year, but you definitely don't want a guy with these question marks that, you, you know, might not fully be invested into the game. So it's it's hard. Uh, he, he comes in as my defensive tackle seven. It's kind of a meeting in the middle. Um, but let, let's, let's go on to the honorable mentions. Uh, definitely want to talk about Michael Hall, the sixth, uh, defensive interior for me he's 20 years old so twitchy day two byron murphy for me i, I want to say that right now it, it looks like byron murphy to me he's just 20 years old and a lot less refined so i i think he's going to be great i wanted to have him at five but i really wanted to talk about darius robinson as well he just has so much more production under his belt but i love michael hall man such a quick mover moves with suddenness his feet are so freaking nimble he's kind of just a freak and i'm gonna bet on him because i really Really like Michael Hall. So he's my number six guy. Uh, Ruka Roboro, really solid. He's my number eight. He's a really good athlete, kind of killed the combine. Uh, Brandon Dorless killed the senior bowl. Really good mover, I guess. That's the theme with all three of these guys. They're really good, fluid movers. I love them all. I think they're all going to be really, really good and could go day two, day three, or definitely day two. Yeah, I absolutely love it. Um, Dorless, who another guy, um, you know, who kind of like Darius Robinson um, just trying to figure out what his true position is. Edge, is it interior? But a super fun athlete, a super freaky athlete. Um, Rook, a row, 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 um, as they did on NFL They like Scooby Doo. Row, row, row. <laughs> I don't know if you watched them, um, if you watched, uh, uh, gosh, what was his name? Rich Eisen and, and those guys talking about his name. It was so funny. Right. <laughs> uh, Rook, a row. Row, row, row. <laughs> just get <going> through it. <laughs> I mean, dude's got an A plus name for that. He should be, you know, bumps him up an extra round. You know, you, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe he sneaks himself into the second round with that name. Absolutely do love it. Um, one other guy I'd like to throw out there who's just kind of a very intriguing prospect, Leonard Taylor the third from Miami. Um, you know, six three, three hundred five pounds. He's just a weird, he's a weird prospect. He's, but he, but the uh, athleticism and upside is very intriguing for him. Um, but just another guy I wanted to throw out there. Two more guys for me. Mason Smith out of LSU, freak athlete, really good prospect. I like throwing a dart at him. And then Christian Boyd, really solid out of Northern Iowa. I think he's going to be a really good piece for a team. But yeah, really, really fun. Really fun episode. Fun ranking all these guys. Uh, kind of fun going back and forth with you on them. Any uh, exit hot takes for me? Uh, mine is Michael Hall is going to be the next Chris Jones. He's my biggest my guy in this class. Absolutely love Michael Hall. Um, how about Rook Ororororo? Finds himself in the second round as a top 10 pick. How about that hot take for you? Second round, top 10 in the second round, Dan. 
All right, the combine is feeding Aurora Rose family. Then that's 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 pretty <laughs> high high capital. But I think it's the I liked it. I, I like it. Yes, sir. You know, um, so everyone stay tuned. We got some more stuff coming for you. We got um, we're gonna try and finish out these last prospect rankings. Also finish out our seven round mock draft series for everyone. So make sure you stay tuned. You like, subscribe, you comment, you give us the algorithm. You help us grow. You know, so we can start doing some more fun things. But, you know, everyone stay tuned. Share the love. Give us your comments down below. You know, good comments, bad comments. We'll take them all. Yep. Quarterback rankings coming soon. So, yeah, stay tuned for the NFL draft content. We're getting out our seven-round mock drafts for each team right now. So, a lot coming out. Stay tuned. Like, comment, subscribe. Peace. Peace.